Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about how to use filters in your Jinja templates. So of course, Jinja is the default uh, template engine in Flask, so that's why I'm using Jinja. Uh, if you're not familiar with Jinja, I have other videos on it, so you should watch those first before watching this one. But if you are familiar with Jinja, then this is the perfect video for you. So filters in Jinja are a way to modify variables. So these can be used to take a value say like one and then you can have a filter called add two so you start with a variable which equals one you filter it into add two and then you get in return the number three because add two of course would just add two to whatever variable you passed in that's kind of a silly example because you probably wouldn't have a filter that simple but that's how filters work they're kind of like functions so you can pass in the variable and then you can also pass in other arguments along um, with the original variable in the filter. And then another nice thing about filters is they can be chained. So you can have one variable followed by 10 filters and the first filter will get applied and the result of that gets passed to the second filter and the result of that gets passed to the third filter and so on. So in this video, I want to uh, just show you a few examples of some of the built-in filters that you can use. And then I think in the next video, I'll show you how to create your own custom filters. So I have open here the, the template docs, and here is a list of built-in filters. So we see ABS, so absolute value, uh, capitalize, uh, dict sort, group by, join, so just, just a few uh, different built-in filters here. You can take a look at these. I'll put a link in the description below. So I think I went too far. So I just wanna demonstrate a few of these. So I'll pick some at random. If I can find where the filters were, I just lost the place. Okay, here they are. So let's just do absolute value first. So let me start up my Flask server. Oh. That's not, it's python and then filters.py. All right, so it's on my local host. So there's nothing there because the template is empty. And it's pretty much going to stay empty because for the purposes of this video, I only want to demonstrate filters. So filters are used inside of the blocks that you need to um, access variables. So if I have a variable, let me pass in a variable here. So I'll say, my var and since we're doing absolute value let me pass in a negative number negative three and i just detach that and i don't know how to attach it back but it doesn't matter so i have um the variable my var so i'll just put my var there and let me just save that and run it and then we see negative three but if i filter this i would first use the pipe so just the straight up and down line, the pipe, and then the name of the filter that I want to use, so ABS. And then the result of the absolute value of my var gets returned. So let's see what that looks like. It's simply three, because the absolute value of negative three is three. So the way that filters work, let me just write it down here in a new file. Um, is they're kind of like functions. So the example that I just showed you, ABS, think of it as a function that takes one argument. And the argument is going to be called variable. So this function is automatically called, in a sense, whenever you use a filter. So my var pipe ABS is equivalent to ABS variable. So you can't do this right-hand side in Jinja. It won't let you, this isn't valid. But uh, you can think of a filter like that. So my var pipe ABS is the same as this. And if your filter had uh, arguments, then it would be something like this. So let's pretend that um, my filter takes in two arguments. So I pass two and nine as the arguments. This is equivalent to um, well, actually, this should be my bar, but sure, that was pretty easy to understand. But anyway, so this is um, my filter. My bar is the first argument, and then two, then nine. 
groups. So you can think of filters like that even though the syntax is like this. So the variable is on the left hand side and then any additional arguments are passed like they're in a function. So that's just what I want to show you there so you can understand uh, kind of what they're doing when you uh, call them. So ABS, let's try a different one. Let's try, let's try capitalize. So it says the first character will be uppercase and all lower, all others lowercase. So instead of my var being three, let's say my var is my name, Anthony. So it's all lowercase. So I'll pass in capitalize and I didn't spell that right. Capitalize. Well, first let me just run the variable by itself. So my var, so Anthony is all lowercase. And then I pass my var to capitalize. And now we see the A is capitalized. And if I change this to be um, just mixed case, so the H, the O, and the N are uppercase. Let's see if it makes them lowercase. Yes, it does. Okay, so that's another very basic uh, filter. They're all fairly straightforward. You can just think of them as simple functions. None of these things here are complicated, so I don't want to demonstrate all of them. Uh, I'll just do a couple more. So let's do pretty print. I really like that one for some reason. So I'll do pretty print. It says pretty print a variable, which is useful for debugging. So uh, typically, you'd want to pretty print something like a dictionary. So uh, let's say my dictionary is going to be um, hello and then world and then I'll have another key, um, second key and then I'll have the number two. So that's my var and first let me pass my var without any filter and it looks like that. And let's see what it looks like when I pretty print it. So P print is the filter. And now let's see what it looks like. Looks exactly the same. So this is one of those things where uh, it depends on the context that you're using it in. Let me quickly try to think of an example where pretty print would be uh, more useful. So let's see. Dictionaries, list. Let's see what it does in a list. So the list is going to be one, two, three. Let's do this without pretty print. It's just one, two, three. Now let's pretty print it. And it looks the same. Uh, one more thing I can try is an object. So let's try a function. So let me declare a function up here, my function and return true. And then my bar is going to be my function. So let's see what this looks like. Maybe this would be the best example. So my var and it just failed, it's probably gonna say it can't pass in a function. Run it again, hit refresh. It says true, if I pretty print it, it's still true. So I guess I can leave that one as an exercise to the viewer. Uh, find something that is useful to pretty print because in most variables are going to be fairly simple so you can just print them uh, as variables uh, but I'm sure pretty print could be used for something I kind of got excited when I saw that filter I thought it would be really cool but I guess not but all these filters are very simple so just look at these uh, look at the docs and like I said I'll put this in the description below 
and you can uh, play around with them because they're straightforward. So that's all I want to cover in this video, uh, how to use filters. If you have any questions about filters, just leave a comment down in the description below and I'll get to it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. So thanks for watching this video. I'll talk about how to create your own custom filters in the next one. Uh, thanks again.